All right, so when we last gathered, the party was told about the curse that their uh, their buddy Henry is truly dealing with, and the seriousness of the timer that is left on his life as we speak and as that explanation was being told to them Roselia used an experimental ritual spell to grant him two extra days of time and afterwards she became incredibly tired and almost down for the count after performing such a thing. Additionally, Yashua showed his true form and his true race to Zero, Cynthia, and Roselia. Zero of which was all the eager to study Yashua, but realized that this really isn't the time to be doing that right now. And so, they were given instructions to seek out one of Dr Zero's drones and to have that drone escort them to a underground bar called the Hidden Wire. Once there, they met some of the patrons in the establishment. They were given a brief rundown of what the place serves for, as it is not just an underground bar. And they were also told that there was something of particular that was going to be helping them out in their future endeavors. This item, so to say, was initially uh, hidden from the group. As the drone was telling them to look in a certain direction, but they saw literally nothing. So they were then told to really focus in on it, and we'll use a little bit of magic. And then once they did that, the item came into view, but it was a strange glowing treasure chest. And once they opened this treasure chest, instead of it being a literal item, there was a, a person inside. A female Makote mercenary pirate who went by the name of Perry. She had been contracted by Zero to help assist in the ongoing battles going on that she kind of forgot due to well, her frequent levels of alcohol consumption. And after a few introductions and whatnot, and it was explained to her the current situation, and after Yashua bought out the entire alcoholic stock of the Hidden Wire, the group decided to continue on their way and regroup with Zero, Cynthia, and Rosalia. Along the way, the party was almost ambushed by two demons and two mages lying in wait for them. One of the demons, however, is wearing a mask and a bit of armor as he very much explained that he wants nothing to do with this. This is not his struggle. This is not his battle. And he was bribed to snap the neck of his, well, would-be companion if he was actually along for the cause with this. And after a few attacks have been made, this particular demon in question decided that he was, ultimately, not going to participate in the battle whatsoever. And thus, he decided that he was going to sit on a rooftop and watch everyone else fight. And with that being said, when we last ended, the mage wearing a green tunic with his hands clasped, clasped together decided that there was no more there was no longer any more time to waste and he took his hands apart from each other 
he drank a vial of green blood. And he slowly rose into the air with three green orbs and a staff materialized of magic floating around him. That is where our, our story will continue from. Was it the enemy's turn when we left off? No. And because um, one of our combatants is strangely not present in the fight, but where she was when I saw her, there seems to be a treasure chest just sitting there. Uh, it is now Yashua's turn. Alright. What the hell did he just drink? It looks gross. I say this in character. Mm. You can roll intelligence to try and guess what he drank. Well, now that I say that, where's my di here? Are my dice. As far as you know, whatever he drank, it was green. Let's see here. Nine. Nineteen, actually. Let's see here. Okay. You can tell that whatever he drank wildly enhanced his magical capabilities. And I'll, I'll give you this too. If you use the Libra spell, you can gain further information. Cool, because I was planning to use Libra on on him, on him, on him, and on him on my first turn. Like I was just gonna use Libra on everyone. Okay. So, how about, instead of you rolling Libra four separate times, let's just say that you spend the rest of your turn scanning the enemies? Yes, no, maybe so? Yeah, we'll go with that. Alright, tight. Uh, so, so, so that the battle doesn't drag out too long, I'm just gonna drop um, some spark notes, but before the battle is over, you will have all the information that regular Libra gives you. Is that cool? Yep. I type. First, start with this one because this this one's a bigger threat to me. Okay. He has a shining word or a shield, and I don't like it. All right. While you are um, taking time to scan the enemies, Dreva is looking around the current predicament and is thinking to herself, Man, how many times have I found myself in an almost ambush situation like this? Yashua says this, in, says this in character, these ambushes are getting old. Well, and Dreva is going to speak up and she says, yeah, well, um, they're kind of like, I don't know, commonplace for what we do at times. And the masked 
demon is going to speak up and say, If you want my honest opinion, this was one of the worst ambush plans I've ever seen in my life. Just, like, we literally just stood here and waited for you all to walk up to us. Back in my day, or... Damn, I guess I am kind of old now when I say that. Back in my day, this kind of shit would be inexcusable. Absolutely unaccepted by anyone. You, I'm going to assume all of you are human to some degree. Um, step your game up, damn it. Hey Henry, I just thought of something fun for you to do. Since you're cursed, and it's dangerously contagious, want to see what happens if you feel up one of these guys? say that Dreva she looks at you in a manner of are you, are you sure about that do you really think that's a good idea Yashua looks at her and smiles no but it will certainly break their line of concentration, and an enraged and agitated enemy are a lot easier to take down than the focused ones. At least, through my experience. Eh, well, uh, I don't really feel that comfortable, but whatever gets us out of here faster is honestly the move to go, I guess. Well, if you feel uncomfortable or you feel threatened, just stand behind me. But if I stand behind you, I can't aim my magic. Unless you want to duck every time you feel me charging energy or something. you. But then again, you'll wind up doing really strange squats in the middle of the fight. Disregard that. Squats? Help me have ridiculous leg strength. Why do you think I'm able to do what I do? You know what? That's... That's fair. That is... Yeah, I can't even... I don't even have a, a comment for that one, to be honest. Uh, anyway, uh, enough talking for now because they are looking, uh, looking more and more agitated. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to deal with green and ugly over here. So if you just give me a quick moment, and she damn near rips her staff off of her back and starts slinging win threes at them. It's one, two... Okay, I that four.
Oh wait, I gotta pull out my calculator too. Gonna need that so I could know how much limit break energy I'm getting. Okay, so with her three wind, <clears throat> with her three wind three attacks, she has dealt uh, one a flat one thousand worth of damage to the green demon en <clears throat> enemy, almost at energy enemy, and has knocked him. Where's my let me measure it. Knocked him 15 feet backwards from where you all are. Almost, but not quite smack dab into the wall. Mm. Mm. Wow, a little harder, and you would have knocked him against the wall. Yeah, well, with how, um, I suppose he's, he's kind of round. Uh, with how muscular and round he is, uh, something tells me I don't really want to knock him all over the place. Because what if he pins ball? What if he pinballs back into us? Hmm. Actually, that gives me a pretty fun idea. What are you thinking of now? Ever used a hu- Actually, have you ever catapulted an enemy towards another enemy? Uh, once by accident, yes. Would you like to do it on purpose? How would you go about doing that? Well, one of us are going to have to get up close and personal. And... Get rid of his mask. His ma the mask? But the mask guy's on the roof. The mask. Oh, the mask. Oh. His weight. Oh! The gravity ring could do the trick. And I know the float spell. Ah, uh, see? Now you're thinking. Well, by all means, let's give it a shot. And <clears throat> as she says that, uh, she twirls her staff above her head, and she casts the float spell on the Lesser Envy Demon's feet. And then with her last action, she is going to use... What is it? Oh, she's gonna use Siphon. On... <clears throat> Excuse me. On the, uh... The Thaumaturgist. To which she... Steals... Okay. And, uh, Henry, it is now, uh, your turn, by the way. Okay. Hello, was poker. Was here. Anyway, um, quick summary. There is a fight going on. If you wish to join this fight, it will take two combat cycles. And, uh, 
Alora is going to apprise you of the situation. Zero's going to be like, run, damn it. And that's your justification for sprinting here. Yes. Hmm. Can I do my thingy thing? What, you No, you don't yeah. have enough energy for that. So, you guys are going to throw that blob. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to toss this guy up here. Towards this guy here. Let's or, make him, let's make or him into a giant. Wants to throw. I want to make him the giant spiky blob. <laughs> also, what, you're going to puncture him with earth so he flies towards an enemy? Yes, so when you guys throw it, it's a giant spike the blob. Ah, now you're cooking with gasoline. So I'm going to cast spike a bunch of times. There. Now he's a giant spike bomb. <laughs> Whoa, we just turned the guy into a morning star. Um, about that. Yeah, but sure, huh? You did zero damage. <laughs> zero? What? It's nothing. <laughs> His damage rolls completely added up, came out to 638, and that thing's defense is 750. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that is so good. It's only putting the, the spikes into him, okay? That's it, I wasn't really trying to kill him. You can't really put spikes into him if there is no spikes. Hmm, okay, let's... Uh, roll a 1d... 40. Okay, let's say that for the trade-off of not doing damage, you did manage to get one of the spikes to tear through his pants. Because of that, he is, while well, he is still floating thanks to Dreva, uh, he is partially stuck to the ground. And now the the green thaumaturg enemy will take his turn as he will look towards Yashua and Dreva and he will cast uh, Gravira being Gravity 2. Now because of Shining Ward, uh, Instead of you taking HP damage, what is what is the value of your shining ward? Seventeen eighty. Uh, yep. Twenty percent of that is removed from the barrier. Okay. And the the impact from the spell itself doesn't necessarily make you flinch, but it does draw your attention. Do I have an effect for that? Do I have a purple effect for this? Let me see. Hold on. Yeah, it's purple enough. Okay. Purple enough. And in response, Reva, she says, oh, it's a... 
that's a... What's a gravity spell? That's not... Very good. I'm... Back, I'm very... Um... Very, very... Happy. That you know this barrier technique now. And then after that, it is going to cast. Hmm. It's going to spend one action casting temper on itself. Then it is going to cast where is it? faith on itself. And then that staff that it summoned, it is going to spin it in front of its face. The orbs are going to begin to swell around its body. And then its turn is going to end. As the frost wizard looks over to his comrade, Roll perception for me, please. Uh, Yashua and Henry, roll perception for me, please. Which one? Perception? Yep. Okay. Uh, you all see that for a very brief moment, the Frost Wizard's face changes from determined to an oh shit kind of face before changing back immediately. And then the Frost Wizard himself, uh, he is going to cast Blizzaga on himself and use it to create a type of Let's say thin veil of ice excuse me, around his body. Afterwards, he will then cast it on on Dreva as a target. But due to Shining Ward being in the way, uh, it's not really gonna do much. Ward. And once the spell makes contact with the barrier, uh, he notices that seemingly nothing happened, and he grows angry yet again. And then he casts the spell two more times. That's half, so... Okay, that last 564 is a 282. Okay. Uh... Calculator. My God! <laughs> Look what you did to my shiny word. Yeah, I, I see. I did the math on my Whoa. side. So after receiving an onslaught of spells and ice type damage like that, your shining ward is beginning to crack in multiple places and is beginning to literally fall apart. Shields are failing. I'm not surprised after taking that many spells. And Dreva, she... She looks at you and she says, Uh, you sound... 
not really concerned with this with what just happened Yashua? Hmm. What's wrong, Drava? What's wrong is that I, I you're not as concerned as I thought you'd be that your shield is breaking given how often you like to use that spell. <laughs> I'll be more concerned if I can reactivate it. Oh, oh well, yeah, that's fair, I guess. Uh, it is now the the lesser envy demon's turn, and he is going to attempt to break himself free of the uh, stone pillar that pierces pants because you can already tell that he's not very smart, he's, he's kind of dumb and so him thinking that his pants got torn means he is stuck to the ground itself also hasn't noticed that he's floating above the ground and that will be his entire turn taking place uh, Mel, there will be one more combat cycle before you are present in this fight. Deal. Uh, Yashua, it is your turn once again. Uh, that gravity spell... That hit me, right? And turn my nerfed my ward a little bit. If I reactivate the shield, is it still there or not? Nah? Uh no. Because gravity when a gravity spell hits you it's an it's an immediate rip of whatever the target's HP is. Your your max doesn't go down, you lose twenty percent of that max from your current. Okay. So I needed to know. Hey, Drava, just to ease you a little bit, check this out. Yashua just snaps his fingers and full strength. That's one action. Just recasting Shadow Ward. All right. And when you do that, the holes and the cracks in the barrier begin to mend themselves and any hole that used to be there is now refilled Javo he looks at the bench and says okay well now I understand how non-worried you were but how many times can you do that one more oh Okay. Yeah, using these energy shields are very, very draining. Now, let's see. Gotta look at this guy's stats again. So this guy is trying to... He's trying to break himself free of something he does need to break himself free of. Okay. He's still floating, right? Yes. Hmm, I could shoot my grappling hook at him and just yeet him towards this guy in front of me. But that stone pillar could prevent me from doing that. Unless I shoot the stone pillar, then I do that. 
uh, the stone pillar that he is fighting against will not prevent you from doing that because to you, you clearly know that he isn't stuck to the ground. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna shoot the grappling hook or the wire, whatever it is, mm -hmm. around his neck. <laughs> around, Actually, his, no, around, his around his currently broken neck. No, 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 no. That's just disrespectful. I'm gonna <laughs> shoot it around his waist. Okay. And for example, I'm gonna use the ruler and just spin him around three times, get some velocity, and toss him towards this dude in front of me. Okay, that's. I don't care if that takes my entire turn. That's gonna be three strength rolls and an athletics roll. Copy that. One, two, three. Okay. Wow. Got some high rolls here. Hey, Drayla, you might want to stand aside a little. Okay. Uh, what are you talking about? And as she says that, she ducks right up under your grappling hook coming out of your wrist mount. And once it wraps itself around the demon's legs, she says, Oh, hey, what's up? Ah! So we start spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. He says, hey, this is actually kind of fun. Um, but why is this happen? And then as he's about to finish his sentence, you wrecking ball him right into the thaumaturgist. Who, because of the impact, goes flying. How far is this? 35 feet opposite of where he is standing and by doing that you didn't necessarily deal any particular amount of damage but you did break his concentration of whatever he was doing prior to that happening and once the lesser envy demon is back on the ground well, ground because he's still floating he says hey that was uh unexpected but you, you um I think you might want to do that again I'll think about it cool and the frost was says not cool you're supposed to be killing them but why do that when whatever he just did to me was, well, the most fun thing that's happened to me since I got here? Don't worry, Frosty. You'll get a turn, too. I want to roll Intimidation when I say this. I was going to say roll Intimidation, yeah. Alright, you say that, and he visibly flinches. Now, uh, in terms of turn order, when Dravo would be getting ready to take her turn next, uh, you hear, you hear a rumbling coming from somewhere, and you, you all peer your head behind, or rather, crane your necks over behind the Frost Wizard, and you can see Perry's treasure chest rattling and opening up. Oh, that was a good nap. Sleeping in the middle of a battle. Drava says, you went to sleep mid-fight? Well, I had to sleep off the alcohol somehow. <laughs> uh... Um. I'm more concerned about how quickly you got in there without any of us noticing. 
Oh, don't worry about it. You'll get used to it. Well, if you're gonna be traveling with us, I, I, I guess. But with that, it's Perry's turn. Oh shit. Um. That was not the right ability. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's too late, my bad. Uh, you can retract it this one time. Thank you, I didn't have my thing pulled up. Um, I'm just gonna attack five times on the blue hair guy. Okay. Okay. Alright, so... After... Emerging out of your chest and shaking off the sleepiness, you immediately start throwing your daggers in a chain succession at the adversary in front of you, whilst teleporting around him several times over and thus disorienting him in the process of doing that. She's also going to land in like a superhero pose with like her knees on the ground and like hand in the air type thing and go, oh, I'm so cool. <laughs> mm. yeah, sure just that. If, if you if you want to do that after your uh, warp strikes, please roll performance. <laughs> oh, gosh. I want you to fail. <laughs> oh, no, that was good. I'm very oh, that's cool. A good roll. <laughs> yeah, that's a good roll. I'm, I'm still adding up the damage, so I haven't seen it yet. Just be happy you're not like Chris, where you get ones often. Uh, so far. We don't talk about the dance competition where I... But you wanted to break much. your legs on that, come on. No. <laughs> not <laughs> quite. I usually play a bard, and almost always roll horribly for performance. Oh, so you have a history, okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh -huh. after all of those attacks and uh, sticking the landing spectacularly, you have dealt 1,673 damage to the enemy. Oh, and I gain stuff for my uh, thingy, right? <laughs> yep. How much do I gain again? Sorry. Uh, hang on. I don't remember how to calculate it. It is 10% of your total damage dealt during mm, your attack yeah. phase, so 10% of 1,673 is 167. Awesome. And for flavor text, as he was being struck by your series of attacks, Every time he got hit, he choked out. <coughs> Why can't you stay still <coughs> and fight me? Um, no thanks. And as Drava is preparing her next series of attacks, she speaks up and says, Didn't you all have a friend who fought like that? Uh, yeah. I guess he decided to start a journey of his own. A long, long time ago. I wonder how he's doing nowadays. Me too. I'm probably much cooler anyway, so... Um. Well, I won't deny that. You... He was a little bit of a glass cannon. And prettier and funnier. <laughs> well, we can... We can now, wonder hold about on. how he, you know, he's doing at a, a later point in time. Uh, we still have a fight that we need to finish. And she... She, t <laughs> she tells Yashua, uh, Do you mind holding my staff for me? Sure. Oh. Draper is... Than... 
is going to take a few steps forward. She's going to ask per Perry, how sensitive are your ears? Um, I mean, um, I'm a cat. I can, I, I can hear quite well. I would say. I mean, I don't know if the sensitive is the word I would use. Well, I'm letting you know now that I am apologizing in advance for what I'm about to do. Eh. And instinctively she, cover my ears. She plats her feet in the ground. She reels her neck back just a bit and she begins roaring at the top of our lungs. Do I need to roll a constitution save? Yes. <laughs> My god, thanks. Yashua Henry. Oh! Uh, Would you look at that? My ears are quite sensitive, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. Okay. So... Uh, Yashua Henry, what 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 is half of five eighty eight? Uh, ah, that's not that many. Okay, you two take two ninety four of sound damage. So you and because of this is this is a sound based attack, shining war does not reflect any of this. Uh, as for Perry, um, I'm dead. No, you're not dead. You're just <laughs> in a lot of audible pain. <laughs> Thank you for that. As uh, all of the other combatants, I have to roll for them. So I took damage or the Shining Ward did? You did. Does our defense take any of that? No, it's a sound attack. Okay. It's a sound so attack? How the hell do you block sound? Just close your ears, forehead. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so the Envy Demon and the Frost Mage took half damage, but the Thaumaturgist not only took the full damage of that attack, uh, they're also losing 100 MP. So, you know, that's cool. Okay, I don't see the numbers of how much damage I'm taking here. And I can't click on my icon for some reason. Uh, five oh, half of five eighty eight is two ninety four. That's what you and Henry are taking since you passed the roll. I was hoping to take none since I pulled a fucking net twenty. Oh wait, you know I actually completely forgot about that part. I was doing the math, so we're not going to say you take no damage because that wouldn't be fair. But one four. Yeah, let let's go with the fourth. So what's the fourth of Okay, uh the fourth that is one forty seven. One forty seven? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's forty and uh, once Drava finishes screaming, she's going to confidently fluff her hair, and she's going to then um, cautiously ask Yashua to toss her staff back. Yashua just side eyes her. Can I walk beside her to give her the staff? But like instead of giving her the staff, I just bunk her in the head. <laughs> sure. And 
And so I'm just, no. I just bonk her in the head and just warn her to not to do that again. And in response, she's going to say, uh, well, at least I warned you all this time, but I'll, as, as, as fun as that spell is, I'll try to do it less often. And Perry, I'm sorry about your ears. I'll, I'll do something about that. What, what was that? What? Okay, you've made your point. All right, it is now Henry's turn. Okay, Henry will cast Cure on himself. And two Cure spells on Perry. Oh, hey, look, a super heal. <laughs> well, yes, well, looks like I only need one on Perry. <laughs> well, well. Uh, yeah, she sure is back at full health from that. Oh, and okay. One on Yashua. I was still calculating damage. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, any any restorative thing, it rolls as damage, but it's healing instead. So one on Yashua. So all of us are back at working condition. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then Mr. Ice Boy over there. I'm going to do. Uh, let's see. Actually, he's away from everybody. He's almost dead. Okay, I'm Mr. Blue Guy over here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use Arrow Brush. Twice. Oh. Oh. Well, oh, that's not. I'm good. not on my damage game today. I'm only on the healing. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're playing support today. Thank <laughs> God I found that cure before. <laughs> there and then. Are you still attacking, or is that your... That's five, ready. Oh, oh, right, right. Healed myself, healed Perry, healed uh, Yashua, and then two attack. Got it. Uh, un unfortunately, uh, you did no damage because of his defense. But, but... But, I will say that uh, the wind caused by your attacks did disorient him just a bit. Do I get anything for my limit break from healing? Uh, that is... <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, that is 5% of the energy healed rounded up. Okay, and now, uh, uh, Perry, please roll perception. <laughs> uh. Okay, uh, in the distance, you hear someone sprinting incredibly fast and then you look to the left right over the frost wizard's shoulder and you can see someone with red hair red hair and a fairy sprinting at an unreasonably fast speed towards you all that's hot Not sure if they're an ally, though. Uh, <laughs> you know, too late, you know. 
I feel like I probably don't have enough time to scream at them if she's running that fast. Uh, I'll give you five seconds to scream. Yeah, that's hot. Hello. Hello. Hi. Are you, are you friendly? As the rest of the party turns their attention... And they see Mel and Allure arriving to the scene, let's say, fashionably late. Uh huh, sorry. I was um, walking my goldfish. What's up? Here now, walking though. your goldfish? Don't ask questions you don't want to answer to. Fashionably late, however, we're here to kick ass, right? Can anyone give me a rundown of the fuck's happening? Blue yeah, hair bad. Yeah, uh, okay. So Wait a minute, who the fuck are you? Hello. Hello, who are you? Uh, get to that later. Okay. Interesting. And who do we who do we have to kill? Um uh, well these three uh guys in front of us uh the guy in the green aura the green demon and the blue haired guy uh they're trying to kill us at the moment and stop us from you know what we've been working on since we got here in the city but that guy in the mask up there he through admission of his own words said i don't want to be here he cuts the driver off as she's Explaining. I can talk myself, thanks. Yeah, oh. um, I don't really care about who you are. Just know that I'm not fighting. I didn't ask for this. This is their problem, not mine. Alright, seems fair. So only, so only these two? Huh. Three. Uh, I expe uh, three, okay. Uh, I expected more, I guess. Okay. Um, <laughs> no offense, obviously, but like, whatever. <laughs> Okay, so, Mr. Mr. Maskman, you seem interesting to fight, hello. I'm Mel, nice to meet you. I'm not telling you my name for now, just call me Mask. Okay, Mask. Sounds- what a nice name. Okay, don't mind if I do fight you. I just said I I'm not fighting them. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean we're not fighting them? I'm not fighting your friends, I don't want to be here. Man, okay, I'll fight another person. Haha, <laughs> my bad. Who the fuck is this Azure looking motherfucker? Sorry, what's good? My name's Mel, your name is. Oh, me? No, where the fuck is your character? Is this you? Mine's behind blue hair Karen. Yeah, I'm, try I'm trying to fight blue. I'm trying to fight Karen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we're calling him Karen? <laughs> it's kind of a Karen y haircut, I don't know. Uh, in response, as bewildered as he is to your sudden arrival, he immediately tries to swat at you with an ice sword. Um, can I, can I, um, can I just smack his face and go like, up, 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 I'm not ready yet? Uh. I doesn't need to do damage, it's just more of like my annoyance. Sleight of hand. Got it. Oh, yep, you, uh, you sure do smack him across the mouth. Excuse me, I was not fucking done. Anyway, Alora! Coming. Huh, what? <laughs> uh, and... Either. Uh, as she flies over, uh, Perry, you, you see what appears to be a fairy, um, following Mel, and she looks at you, you look at it, and it opens its mouth, and all you hear is... Beep, 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 beep. Oh! I'm really tired of that. Beep, beep, beep. It's like, what, what, it's like... what did it say? What? I don't know. It's so cute, though. Oh, you're so oh it's, cute. it's said, hi, my name is Alora, nice to meet you. Isn't that right, Alora? Oh! Beep, beep, beep. Okay, I'm gonna stop with that. Okay. <laughs> well, let's fight this fucking... Weird call gate looking ass bitch. Okay, I'm. Um... Yeah. Uh, 
Are you deciding what attack to use, or did my Discord break? <laughs> <laughs> okay, my Discord didn't break. Nope, you're good. Now you can start off with your signature move, the, the Dragon Slice. Okay. Matches I enjoy the battle music. The awkward silence is kind of getting to me. I mean, yeah, I just have to edit this out in the recording. When I <laughs> edit this, <laughs> what, what happened? Where did you go? Uh, uh -huh. Well, in uh, different terms, in different terms, my internet died. In other terms, I don't know, brain damage. Brain damage? <laughs> yes, brain damage. Okay. <sighs> Back to where I was. God. Okay. Do we know anything about any elements that they're weak to right now? Uh, no clue. No clue? Fuck. Okay. Mm. At least, no, I don't. I have no clue. Perry's also mm. an idiot, so I don't. That's true. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. What do you mean that's true? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know you. <laughs> Anyone else, Yoshua? Elements that he's weak to? Well, I did use Libra on them earlier. Uh -huh. Even though they... They don't seem to be aware when someone uses a scanning tool on them. They're not very experienced in combat either. Uh huh. So you don't have to worry about weaknesses. Just you know, hack free at them. Just, just Great. be mindful with this uh, green pasture over there. He has a barrier around him, and I don't know what the contents are. Hmm. Well, it's green. So yes, that means grass, green. which means fire type. Got it, I'm gonna use fire. Uh, gonna cast fire I, on my swords. I don't think it works like that, Mel. It, it, it must, it, it has to. I'm gonna cast fire on my sword. And use Dragon Slice four times to increase my damage, so... Dragon Slice on who? Oh, on Karen in front of me. <laughs> Karen? <laughs> okay. I Frost Wizard. I froth. Okay. So. Oh, okay. My attack went up and for to change that. Okay. Womp. Ooh. Why? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Three. And. Oh. Wait, where are you? Uh huh. Four. Okay. We're very grim numbers. At the lore rolls today. Hmm, what's happening to us? Okay, and then Alora also needs to do something after I'm done because. Ah, bup, 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 bup. After I'm done. That's why I stopped because Spellblade Fire was one action. The four Dragon Slices were your other four actions. You don't have any more yeah. actions to tell Alora to do stuff. No, Alora has two. We did that last time. I had five actions, Alora has two. Oh, right. Laura's her own individual. She doesn't need no woman. Or man. Or fairy. Right, Alora? To, you know, to, to you, you can understand her. So she says, I don't really know what that means. But to everyone no, else, worry. they hear. <laughs> I'm so tired. Oh, don't tell me you actually got a freaking sound box for this. I did. No, it's my fucking voice. No. No, that's not her voice. You know the, um, the beeps from Friday Night Funkin'? <laughs> oh. Oh my god, that's brilliant. <laughs> that's exactly what she sounds like. She sounds like Friday Night Funkin'. Okay, now back to mapping things. Also, uh... The rolls aren't necessarily low. They're they're acting as normal. I'm non-existent. 
Well... <laughs> Just me doing a backflip. <laughs> a perfect backflip. Uh, <laughs> so, let's say, right, that because of you suddenly executing a an, an outstandingly perfect backflip, uh, your next speed-related attack has a plus two to its damage. Wait, wait what? <laughs> okay. Friction trick shot. Now I, I wanna fail it. <laughs> well. I'm still flexible. Okay, poker and uh, anyway, no, for your attack roll, you dealt 315 worth of damage. Normally but because your weapon was on fire, you dealt an additional 50. So you dealt 365. I told damage. you guys! <laughs> it's better hey, than poker. zero. Hey, Poker, can you do me a solid? Can, can you move your icon, like, right here so I can see this guy's health bar? No. <laughs> Play in fear. Right. I'm joking, I'm moving. <laughs> Play in fear. Okay. So now, now that it is the enemy's turn, and with Mel and Allure uh, successfully being in the fight now, when it is the player character's turns again, turn order will go Yashua, Perry, <clears throat> Yashua, Perry, uh, Drava, Mel, Henry. Sounds uh, sexy. And then Alora, don't forget. Well, yeah, because she's you know, piss slow at yeah, the moment. She's faster than me. <laughs> Alora counts as me, but not me, so she just goes after me. Uh, was... Her name's Alora. Yeah. I just realized that's my old username online. That's really weird. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, well. Um, she picked her own name. Alora's her oh, own well. name. She picked a good one. Alora. I like it. <laughs> a nice name. Uh, the Thaumaturgist uh, reclaims his bearings and he grabs one of the orbs that was floating around his body and he crushes it and as his hand is on fire he places his hand on his chest and through that action alone, he sets himself on fire. And this fire is a disgustingly venomous verdant green. And the other two orbs grow in size quite a bit. And in his free hand, you can see him slowly begin to conjure a rapidly growing energy orb. Oh. The frost mage will use his entire turn casting <clears throat> well no, no, no. He's going to use his, his entire turn casting uh, Blazaza, which is Ice 5. And Blizzagon being I six. So and he will be casting those uh, right where he is standing as an AoE. And because he, he, Okay. And the way AoEs work, uh parry, is that when used against you, uh you are getting hit no matter what, but your speed stat will be subtracted from the attack's damage roll. So for visual effects, pew pew, get the ice explosions. And now we will do... Crap. 
I, I was going to say that's a crit, but the one canceled that out, so disregard that. Vamacaroni. Okay. It's... Okay. Please subtract your speed and defense stats from 1,163. I don't have anything, like, for my defense. What do you mean? <laughs> the both of us forgot to punch that in. I'm gonna be yeah. completely honest. Uh, <laughs> I, maybe I thought... I. Oh, I see. Okay, I have 350 then? Because I have that from my armor? Yeah, um... Okay, never mind. I, I have 350. Okay, so I... So you're subtracting... 350... And... What's your speed stat? 206? Alright, so you're subtracting mm -hmm. 350 as your defense, and then 206 as your speed. From 1000... 163. So it'd be like 607? Yeah, that's that looked like it hurt. That's the damage you wait before I finish that statement. Ah! Uh shave off another ten percent of that because of your armor. I mean your uh, AC stat, and then that's the damage you'll be taking. Take off 10% of the 600? Yes. Okay. No, you, you're good. You do your damage stuff. Did I do my damage? Oh, no, Alora needs to go. Miss Fairy. Tiny, tiny human. Can she go? Um. Uh, whose turn? What? Sorry. I'm doing math. Do you want the bad news, or do you want a chance to prevent the bad news from happening? Uh, for chance to prevent negative news. I need you to roll a 1d4 to jump in front of the two waves of ice that are currently heading for Allura. Got it. <laughs> Alright, so you more or less blink out of existence and appear right in front of her to shield her from the ice. Can I also use... To be fair, I'm shielding her from the ice, which means that I get hit, correct? Yes. Okay, I want to use... Where are you? Slapshot. You cannot counter magic. That is a melee what? counter. Oh, fuck, yeah, you're right. I hit me. Can I absorb it with my sword? No, not. Fuck. I keep telling you, you can't do that yet. You don't <laughs> have that ability. Fuck. <laughs> Someday. Okay. Now, in all honesty, because I I did entirely have a R slash whoosh moment and forgot about Alora's turn. Uh. As. I don't, I don't have the right word I'm looking for now, but uh, this one time, because I forgot, uh, Allura can have four actions instead of two. Allah, Adam. Okay. Allura, you know what that means? You're gonna be a giga bitch today. <laughs> what does that mean? So much. Uh, Che. Well, she does have Dragon Slice, so guess whose attack is going up? This bitch. Okay, Dragon Slice once, Dragon Slice twice, Dragon Slice the third time, and then the fourth. Look how tiny her attacks are, I love it. Yeah, and uh, she didn't do any damage. What? It's okay, Alora, I believed in you. Can we use her as emergency rations yet? I'm gonna start using her as a cure bitch instead of that. <laughs> uh, when you make the uh, emergency rations comment, uh... 
fear panic. What is this behavior? Listen, I'll roll for her. I got you, it's I'll roll for her. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I already wrote the charisma save for her, it's too late. She, she is, it's my character. <laughs> she is currently freaking the hell out. It's just my character. I have her sheet in front of me. Okay. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? I could have rolled for her. Rest in peace, Alora. She will be missed. All right, moving I'm on. I'm about to use persuasion. Uh, to calm her down. Calm her down, yes. Yes. Ah, uh, fail, fail. <laughs> Ay, it's not a good one either, though. Grim. You know, <laughs> well, Aurora, you're dying. Real quick, uh, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I said this before, but unless I tell you guys that. Insert roll is bad. Stop assuming it's bad. <laughs> Please. It always seems like it's bad. Anyway. Oh, I have a. Well, I don't know if this is like a time to bring it up, but. Am I supposed to get the turn still or whatever? Or not turn still. Uh, just like the still whenever I attack. Uh, yeah, we use melee attacks. Okay. I forgot that that was a. Thing that my class had. Yeah, that's that's fine. You'll the more you do things, uh, the more you'll remember. Um. Okay, so now now that the complete player turn is done over, uh, the thaumaturgist is still preparing. I haven't gone yet? Huh? I haven't gone yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so slow that I've forgotten. <laughs> well, you're not gonna do damage to them anyways. <laughs> Damn. I'm fighting words. Harry got more charge. I don't know what's going on with Henry. Like, his spells are not doing damage to the enemies. Did you forget to recharge your staff? Yeah. It has no batteries. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna do my job here and heal Mel. <laughs> oh, thank you. And heal Perry again. Thank God. Just... Are you guys at full or do I have to do more? I was I'm, already at full. I am but... not, but. Okay, no, one more. No, you took damage. Wait, no, earlier. I wasn't. Yeah. You didn't tell me how much damage I took. I, I told you what to do for it. One more for Perry, so uh, Perry should be full. I'm just gonna reduce a bit of my HP. Hmm. I'm not anywhere close to full. Did I take too much damage earlier? Uh. Uh. You. I took like 600 something worth of damage and that was without the, ten that was like with the 10%. Uh, that, that first cure that you got hit by put you at full. Did what? My cure does 633 on you, that first heal. No, but, but both of the numbers get added together. Oh, 600. Oh, oh, oh. I was, I did the, I looked at the 69 and just saw 69, not the 633. My bad. Yeah, the first one, the first one got me back. Okay. So I only have to My bad, to sorry. Okay, I'm going to use mana charge. And mana charge again. <sighs> well, that's not going to do damage anyway, so might as well just do... Let's see. Instead of trying to do damage, you could uh, break this guy's concentration because it looks like he's charging for a big one. Yeah, I'm going to use slow on him. This. Yeah. Um... Okay. Hmm. 
so with you casting slow, while his concentration isn't necessarily broken, uh, he does feel the passage of time begin to slow down around him. As uh, whatever he is currently preparing for you all is now going to take an additional turn. Uh, the Envy Demon is going to stand back to his feet. He is going to look at the Thaumaturgist. He is going to look at the Frost Mage. He is going to look at Mask. And then he is going to look down at his feet and that's when he finally realizes, Oh hey, I'm floating! That's cool. And then he says, um, I don't really want to fight anymore. This is, one, it's, it's, uh, it's not very enjoyable for me personally. And, um, thinking about what Mask says, and it's not very often that I think, this really isn't my problem either. And the Frost Mage speak up, speak up and says, "You infernal halfwit!" Hey, that's not very nice. Henry screams out, "Are you going to take that from him?" <laughs> yeah, you should really teach him a lesson. Persuasion rolls. Let's go. Yeah, you were. So he hears you, and he says, you know what? No, I don't think I'm going to take that. So he strolls right on over to him, and the Frost Mage uh, backs himself into a corner as he tries to make some kind of escape, and... When he is, when his back is completely to the wall, and the Envy Demon is standing right in front and slightly above him because of how tall he is, he looks legitimately angry for a moment. And as he is thinking about what to do, uh, he looks at Alora, says absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. He looks back to the. Frost Demon, he reels his arm back as far as he can, and the way that he reels on back, it kind of wraps around his body a bit, and when he slings his arm back in the opposite direction, he, strangely, punches the High Frost Mage in the direction of Henry. Oh, grim. And as he is flying towards Henry, he collides with the Shining Ward and subsequently bounces back right in front of him. Oh, that did not feel good. I say this because the Shining War just vibrates from impact. <laughs> and as the Frost Mage attempts to stand back up after being hit so hard, the Envy Demon then grabs him by the shirt and he says, you know what? This isn't my problem either. <laughs> and then he Pyro drives him into the ground head first. Oof. Oh. And the moment his uh, head collided with the ground, uh, there is a 
scientifically reasonable result. As uh, he is deader than death itself and his head is now a pancake. Mask, he says, well, 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 looks like someone finally came to the goddamn senses, or finally found some since you're really fucking stupid. And he says, uh, hey, redhead, move out of the way. Mm. You know what, I, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna just do this. You move out of the way, and he takes one of the barrels of alcohol that he was given by Yashua and he rolls it down to the demon and he says drink up and the thaumaturgist uh, opens one of his eyes and he he looks over at the current sight before him and he cuts his spell short as as he takes another one of those green orbs of his and he crushes crushes it in his hand and as he is doing that that horse name that a lot of you heard at an earlier point in time resounds in your ears yet again. Henry, please roll a 1d10. You hear it the loudest as you Take the emerald shard out of your pocket and you are compelled to hold it towards the enemy and seconds later you hear the slicing of a sword going across the air. The enemy's barrier is now gone. And you can tell just by looking at him that he was in the process of casting a flare spell. And through that, you have unlocked Critical Libra. You just have to find the unlock noise. Wait, who did? You did. I will tell you what that does at a later point in time. And with his aura cut short, uh, the last remaining enemy is now currently trying to run away. Uh, it is Joshua's turn again. Thanks for having Henry screams out, we need a hostage to find out where I can break this curse. Okay, so... You know how the Olympic runners like to, like, hunch over before they run and just do a mad sprint? Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna chase after this fucker. He's not escaping. That is going to be... Athletics? Wait, before, before I finish that sentence... Based on where you're standing... Are you going to run straight ahead and then cut the corner? Or are you going to leap over the obstacles in your way as you run towards him? I like the sound of the ladder. Okay. For that, I'm going to have you roll uh, acrobatics. Okay, 
Okay, now you may roll athletics. Wow. <laughs> okay, so Jesus. you vault over the debris in your way, and then the moment your feet touch the ground, Within seconds, you adopt a running position and you charge at full speed towards him. And the moment you are within arm's reach of him, you tackle him to the ground and pin him down. <laughs> and with that... Uh, how are you going, or uh, rather, how are you planning to restrain him? I'm tearing off his legs. Oh. <laughs> oh. I mean, shit, that works. Uh, roll strength for that. I'm gonna tear off his legs and cast heal so he doesn't bleed out, so like all... All that's left are just stumps. I hope I don't get a crit roll, because I don't want to tear him in half. We're about to find out. This guy's going to bleed out either way. Oh my god. So, two rolls for each leg? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was going to say that one roll was enough for what I was about to say. But, yeah. Humans typically do have two legs. Uh, so... <laughs> Instead of saying you just rip his legs off his body, do you remember that scene from Naruto when Sasuke oh first uh, felt the energy of the curse mark and he broke that dude's arms? Oh. Yeah, that's what you do Is that instead what of, I'm doing? That's what you do instead of just ripping his arms off. And where is... And because, uh, all the enemies, or rather the enemies that you fought, one of which being dead and the other is restrained and can no longer continue to fight, the battle is won. No one escapes. <laughs> As he holds the two flesh legs. <laughs> oh. Oh no. As for your rewards... Can I add these two legs to my inventory? No, you cannot add the no! legs to my inventory! Oh my the god! Fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, bro? <laughs> um, uh, you all have gained... Uh, 1000 EXP, because only one enemy was defeated, and the other... Uh, ejected himself from the fight as a combatant towards you all. And the other living enemy is restrained. Mm. So let's I'm gonna type this out. So up thousand EXP uh, four thousand gill one empty vial of mysterious liquid One. Oh, by the way, uh, Perry, whenever a battle is won and there are uh, items that the enemies leave behind, everybody gets the item, unless I specifically say this item is going to this person. Gotcha, so I don't have to, like, loot the body or anything after? And unless you want to look for additional things that I didn't give in the rewards tab? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Looks like that frost necklace may come in handy for you, Henry. It could. Oh, and um, 1,000 EXP good. for your main class, 500 for your subclass. Yep. I'm sad I don't get to keep the legs. No! <laughs> I'm glad you don't get to keep the legs. What are you gonna do, cook them or something? I'm gonna what beat it, color? Gonna... Oh, sorry. Uh, what color, what is, color what? is the mysterious liquid? Uh, green. Perry's drinking it. I'm what? Um. 
on. Does it have any taste to it? Would you know? <laughs> we have two. We have two chaotically good people in this group now. <laughs> uh, well, uh, more like neutral. <laughs> please do a Constitution saving roll. No! <laughs> oh my God! You're gonna fucking die. <laughs> we just lost a party member. <laughs> so this is so my Constitution. Why can't it be dexterity, Resting dude? Me. Dexterity for my gut. <laughs> Can my gut dodge? <laughs> Can my gut dodge? <laughs> Upon consumption of what was left in the vial... Carrie is reminded that she has IBS. Uh, <laughs> you immediately lose all of your remaining MP. <laughs> and you lose 700 HP. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> did it, did it have any taste? Uh, it tasted like the most bitter and rotten green apple you've ever eaten in your life. Oh this my god. Christ. Carrie's just in the corner, like her arm is perched up against a wall, and she's just hacking so up everything. Henry lets out a giant sigh and just walks over to her and cures her. <laughs> <laughs> now hold on. <sighs> is the mysterious liquid different for everyone? No. Uh, no. <laughs> so if I so I can't constitution save and get a good one and not that can't <laughs> your boobs grow. Well, oh. I, I did, I did, oh my I, god, can I? Can I? <laughs> I didn't necessarily say that, but hold on. So Wait, it was minus seven hundred or how much was it? Sorry. Uh, you lose all your MP and seven hundred HP. Okay. I okay, can't so... heal MP, so I'm just healing six hundred. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Riku. Uh huh. You're telling me. That if I use, like, if I drink it with my constitution save is sexy, what happens? You may test that assumption at your earliest convenience. <laughs> what if, Can like, I what if... the frost necklace? I'm drinking it. While these guys are committing suicide off Let's the go! <laughs> oh, that was a good caught save, though. Okay. You do not lose all of your MP. You lose half... Of your current MP. Yeah, and, not bad. And you lose 500 HP. Does it do anything? Like, why am I drinking this shit? You drink it. Like, I mean, yeah, <laughs> true. Where's my fucking MP? It's not like I use MP anyway, so it's fine. Um, Yashua is glaring at the bottle and says, <laughs> Drink it. I should most likely see what's inside this later um, instead of drinking it. Alora yeah, no, don't, uh, don't, don't do it. Attempt to stop Mel from consuming what is in the vial, but she is too late. As honestly, it's okay because Alora has her own bottle. <laughs> she starts what? frantically uh, attempting to shout at you, but every time she tries to shout, she kind of stutters and trips over her own words. And <laughs> To everyone else, this sounds like. <laughs> okay, so while you guys are doing that, I am j walking back to where you guys are, but I'm dragging this guy by the head. Okay. Or by the neck. Because um, he can't walk the, anymore. Uh, before... Can I hop onto the roof and talk to the mask demon? Yes, but... Uh, your earlier question about the frost necklace. Yeah. Uh, it should you choose to equip it, it gives the wearer a uh, protection against most ice space attacks, lessening the damage by fifty percent. Sounds good to me. Okay. Now. You said you were talking to the masked one? Demon, yes. Okay. Because he's easily persuaded, apparently, from what we've been dealing with. Okay. <clears throat> uh, what do you want with that uh, curse on your face? Uh, I want it removed. Do you know how I can find the caster of it? Do I look like I fucking know? Yes, you do, Mr. Maskman. 
that wasn't meant to be answered seriously, but whatever. Uh, no, I, as much as I would love to help you get rid of some shit that doesn't involve me, uh, the kind of demon I am, I don't, I don't fuck with curses, I fuck with illusions. And what I currently see behind you is quite honestly scaring the shit out of me. Oh, grin. So, you if you don't mind sure. backing up just a bit, okay. and keep that shit away from me, I'd appreciate it. Can you teach me a Lucian spell? Do you have demon blood in you? Uh, points at the giant third eye on forehead. <laughs> that doesn't mean you have demon blood. You have a demon spirit uh, stalking you, yes. But, no, you look like your average human to me. Can I try? <laughs> <sighs> if you're that desperate, I can think of something to teach you, I guess. Uh, give me some time to rack my brain, though. And, in exchange for this, you gotta send me back to hell. Sounds like a good deal. And before you even think about it, no, you do not have to kill me to do it. Unfortunate. Sounds good. Can we make a contract? What the fuck do you think this is, a business deal? Yes, this is a business deal. <laughs> he looks over to Mel. Are all humans as bad at sarcasm? No. It's just him? Uh-huh. Got it. Yeah, sure, whatever. A contract. We... Now, um... Do you mind giving me the shortest summary you can as to what the fuck is going on? I jumped in Portal. Portal cursed me. I need curse <laughs> off. Well, I, I, I didn't necessarily mean your situation, but I suppose that works out. Uh, we're going to scene transition just a moment back over to Yashua and the thaumaturgist that is being subdued and that is somehow being partially beaten with his own leg. Uh... He speaks and he says, this changes nothing. Shut up. Uh, please roll investigation. You hit him and you see at the corner of your eye something red begin to slip out of his pocket. I mean, not his pocket, his, uh, the cloth on his shoulder. I grab said object. Do I have to roll to see what it is? Please roll... History. History. Okay. You reach towards the object and you feel an all too familiar heat slowly encompass your hand. Oh, it's these fragments, isn't it? And once you. Well, I'm going. It's safe to assume you pulled your hand back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you pull your hand back, and you remember that heat all too well, as it is another Ignis shard uh, on his person. Get a grin on my face when I see the Ignis shard. 
So this is what I want to do. I want to grab this person by the hair, bring them back where everyone is, and call our boy Xander. Okay. Uh, you, you get up, you drag him over, and you blow in your whistle, and uh, not too long after blowing to the whistle, our favorite red chocobo uh, enters the scene. Why, hello there, friend. Um. Uh. This is strangely amusing. Um. Care to explain why these two demons are just drinking alcohol and why there's a now fairy here and. Oh, it appears I'm missing a lot. But, before that, I'm assuming you found another shard, yes? Yes. Yes, as I casually lift this guy and it points at the shard. Do I have to roll strength to completely lift this guy? Nah. He's half a man. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he just lost 40 pounds. So you pick him up. You show him to Xander, and he says, oh, hey, well, he's, he, um, be very, very careful. Because he doesn't just have one, he has four. One four. of which is about to fall out of his shoulder, or the fabric on his shoulder, and the other three are, well, um, please pick a number for my following explanation. One or two? Two. The other three are inside of his skull. Oh. It is astonishing how he hasn't melted from the inside. Hmm. Well, um... Well, you are free to eat him alive. I... I'm not going to eat him. Because... Uh, that's just... Gross. Instead... I'm going to... Well... Forcibly remove the shards from his skull. Uh... You all are rough and tough grizzly adventurers, but I'm not going to make you watch this. And after he says that, Xander uh, flies over, picks the thaumaturge up by his beak, I mean with his beak, and as he flies away from the party, you can hear the thaumaturge very loudly screaming for his life. As you can see flashes and flares of red fire uh, come from the area. And you hear a very, very loud belch from Xander. As well. he flies back over to you all. He drops a body on the ground and he says, don't worry, he's alive, traumatized, but alive. Now then, um, is there any other particular reason you called me here, or was it just for those? Because if that was the case, thank you for the meal. Henry screams out, hey Xander! <laughs> From the top of the roof. Xander looks at us, hello Hen- Ah. That isn't good. <laughs> hmm. Xander flies right over to Henry and he gets dangerously close to the eye marking on your forehead. Oh. Oh. Um. You don't have very long to 
to live, do you? Nope. And you seem completely unfazed by this. Yep. He flies over to Alora. Um, are other humans like this, young one? And Alora, she says, I don't know. Wait, how can you? You talk can understand to me? her. And Xander says, Uh, did you forget the part where I am a deity? I mean, still. Yeah, most. Um. Well, I'll say this: as a deity and an agent of the mystic. Most mystical life creatures I can speak to. The only ones that I can't speak to are those whose power exceed my own. Wow, can you speak to me? You're a regular hu- Tragic. I'm not entertaining that. Tragic, really. Oh, I'll speak to you, little mama. And oh. Perry's eating, like, a half-eaten corn dog that she found on the ground. And, like, in between bites, she's, like, picking dirt from it. Very grim. Xander flies over to you. Hello, we haven't met before. Oi. She kind of just tips her head back. Uh, my name is Xander. I'm a friend of Yashua's over there. And, um, Drava over there. And, uh, we kind of have a deal going on. That, um, actually... How much of this explanation are you willing to hear? I've already checked out. What was your name? Right. We can... Have a chat at a later date. Uh, he flies back over to Yashua. So... And he also sits on his shoulder. Anything else you wish to apprise me of, my friend? No, I just needed your help to get rid of these Ignis shards. I have one thing. Yes, Henry? I show him the clear crystal that we heard the sounds from before. The clear emerald crystal. Oh, hey. That's Odin. How did he... Didn't he belong to someone else? Or rather... Wasn't his spirit with someone else? <laughs> Traitor. Oh. He betrayed you all. Okay. Now... He perished. Why... Well, I suppose I'll have to ask him later. But... Why is it that... And I mean no disrespect by this... You're in possession of his crystal. I picked it off the ground after our traitorous friend left this world. Huh. And I've been taking care of this stone ever since. Strange. Odin and Sleipnir, his horse, they don't necessarily do the whole, you know, magic thing. Nonetheless, um, I guess I'll talk to him later, I suppose. Uh, with that out of the way, um, I'm going to go back to surveying things, if there's nothing else that needs to be said. And, uh, you all take care. Oh, and, um, you probably shouldn't leave that headless body there. Mm, you're right. Hey, Drava, incinerate it. Hey, that's my job. <laughs> Drava says, okay. you know, you, you could say it a little nicer, you know? I'm not some kind of, like, dog or something. Shit. Would you kindly incinerate the body, please? If you really want me to, I suppose. 
Is that enough fire for you? Well, I don't know. Is, is the body turned to ash? Uh, if I stop casting, I can see that it is non-existent. Cool. It smells like Karen. <laughs> <laughs> And as Xander is flying away, you can hear him say, oh, I've, ugh, I've never enjoyed the scent of burning flesh. And that is the last thing you hear from him before he ex exits the scene. Alright, now what should we do with the green one? He's still alive. Barely. Does he still have the staff? Uh, that staff was dispelled when uh, he was subdued. Or rather, when Odin uh, sliced his... It. Yeah. Mm, let's see if he has other possessions. Because the only thing I found were two healthy legs. That you threw in a garbage can. <laughs> well, Riku, Riku didn't let me... I'm not letting you walk around with... <laughs> In legs, bro. <laughs> you never know. We might need it later on. <laughs> anyway. I was going to give the legs to Regis. You know, give it to somebody that needs legs. What? I'm not entertaining that comment. <laughs> <laughs> so, do I roll investigation to, like, check his pockets? See what else I find? Uh, Yes. Okay. Let's see. Which pocket are you looking at? Oh, I'm 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 completely looting his, his all of his pockets. Give me one more investigation roll. Okay. Well, he doesn't have back pockets anymore. Those came with the legs. Alright. So you you shake him down. And of the contents that are within his pockets, out comes an additional 5,000 gil. Two syringes, both of which are empty, but they have been used. And I'm going to type this out as I say it so I don't forget. Uh, you find another vial of a mysterious liquid, but this time it is pink. And you find the container for the Ignis Shard that Xander just ate. Cool, oh, we could use said container to actually keep one of the Ignis shards, no? I'm not gonna say no. The only issue is, uh, touching it. Oh. Yeah, cause, uh... I should've, I should've bought some oven mittens. <laughs> <laughs> as a as a reminder for the group and to bring this knowledge to Perry, uh, that red chocobo that you just met, those uh, shards or whatnot, if they come into contact with any physical matter, everything within I believe I said a three hundred block radius will not exist. Oh, and they are wildly hot to the touch. And Xander eats uh -huh. them. Oh. Gotcha. Throw it on the floor like fireworks. We forgot to ask him for another whistle. Why the whistle still works? Or Perry. Eh. It's fine. We all have one except her. 
She's she's gonna be traveling with us. I'm pretty sure Perry wants a legendary whistle that could summon a deity. I don't think I uh, I don't think I trust her enough to give her that kind of whistle. I don't trust you with that whistle either. So don't push your luck. And Jeva speaks up. Oh yeah, speaking of uh, giving things to people. Uh, before we left, Zero said he snuck a communicator in one of your pockets, and you were supposed to give that to Perry. To whose pocket? Yours. Oh. Huh? I reach out to my back pocket. He really is a trickster, isn't he? Uh, yeah, um... I didn't even see him move, and I was kind of watching him talk to you. Yeah, I didn't even notice either. That's okay. Mm. And here I thought my senses were sharp, but him? Ooh, he's something else. Perry, think fast. Eh. Sleight of hand, please. Both of us? Yes. <laughs> okay, so she instantly caught it. Oh, yeah, she, mm. she snatched it right out the air, took one good look at it, and immediately knew how to install it. I was hoping to get like a one, so I just throw it against the wall. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think there would be a roll. I was just going to have her not catch it at all. Well, you got that cat like reflexes. Yeah. Hey, we're wasting time here. I'm I have a limited time span on my life. <laughs> yeah, you'll live. Okay, so what should we do with this guy? Put him in your inventory. <laughs> well and this is Drava talking. Um since earlier was said we should probably get a hostage uh, we got our hostage so now we just gotta get to uh, get back to the, the club I guess and uh, um, you know we can we can have a another round of um, introductory conversations later uh, Green guy and mask. What are you two gonna do, though? Mask coming with us. He has a contract with me. Henry screams out. Okay. What about the other guy? I say we should bring him along. Murder. No. Oh. Agreed. Well. Henry screams <laughs> down to the big green guy. Do you like drinks? <laughs> Um, well, given that this, uh, this, uh, 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 it's a barrel, you dumbass. This barrel was empty the moment I put my hands on it, and there was a really tasty liquid in there. Uh, yes, yes I do. Hey, he's oh. our friend now. He's coming with us. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Yashua materializes two more barrels. Here, knock yourself out. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and he he grabs the barrel and he somehow is holding them as if they're bottles of water as he's just casually sipping on it. And Alora watches him do this and she asks Mel, uh, hey, do you, do you know what he's drinking? Don't ask. Oh, okay. just simply don't ask. Okay. Can we um, corrupt the fairy? Do you mind if, uh, I kind of watch him? You kind of what now? I, he he looks, he looks funny. And oh. 
I, I, I kind of want to watch and see what he does. Oh, okay. He has a crush on him. <laughs> that's a that's a weird relationship. That is a very grim relationship. I'd be like, I mean, uh, okay, but we'll be careful. Speaking of crushes, uh, what what was what was your name again, redhead girl? Oh, Mel, and yours, pa Perry, and she's like twirling her hair in her fingers, oh like she stood up way more straight than she normally does. Perry, nice to meet you. I put you're, my hands you're, forward. You look, you look great. Like you must, you must like work out or something. You look fan, fan, fantastic. Let me. I'm not saying I don't work out, but like you know. And you look fabulous yourself. Oh, thank you. It's years of liquor. Oh my god. <laughs> well, you two are having this conversation. Yasha just drags this guy by the neck and just makes his way out of the area. The casino. To the, to the casino. casino. Oh my god, where, there's a casino. Where where we're supposed to go? The bar. Uh, Perry, would you care bar. to join me at the bar? Oh yes, of course, of course. And she like brings out her little flask that she always has on her and it, like just sticks it out. She doesn't say anything, she just offers it to you without any words. I take a sip. <laughs> That's good, right? Right? They bought it for me. I, I'll be mm. honest, but you know, it's pretty good. I like it. I've never had it, but I probably have had it. You know. <clears throat> anyway, uh, she's completely really word vomits. <laughs> I start well, laughing. Well, that's happening. I walk by to Dreva, and I'm like, "You have my full support." You have my full support. What is, what is that supposed to mean, Yashua? <laughs> Say that. I don't. Elaborate, I just walk. <laughs> Answer me, damn you! And with, oh, no. and with that, the scene will transition to everyone collectively uh, leaving the area with Henry trailing as far behind as possible as his current situation kind of demands that he does. Uh, I'm sure the demons could stay with me. <laughs> say that again? I'm pretty sure the demons could stay near me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you remember, uh, Mask literally asked you to keep some distance as he can Yeah, but I don't want to be alone at the back. At least leave me with the big dummy, dude. <laughs> hey, if you like, you could drag this uh, half-dead guy. I can't touch him! He's alive still! <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. He's not going to do anything. I'm going to curse him while he has no legs. It's worse. Oh, yes, he will turn into a necromorph. Or a puddle of acid. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say the the big green dummy. He, he, he walks and drinks with you. As, but, Fucking but, uh, the final thing that I'll say before we, a we actually transition the scene is that he looks over at Alora he begins to offer her some of his alcohol and he says actually no it's not that I'm being selfish or anything uh where I come from fairies are kind of a thing and you guys are not supposed to be drinking under any circumstances and um uh I can be pretty funny at times Oh, we didn't get their names. What are the demons' names? Uh, well, this one's Mask. While I'm walking with the big guy, what's your name? My name? Uh... What is my name? Oh, it's... It's Rufus? No. Rufus? No. <laughs> uh... Raphael, that's my name! Yeah! Yeah, I have a, I have a, a something. He pulls out his flaming wallet and he hands you his ID, and oh, it sure oh as fuck God. says Raphael on it. Okay, so now you will be moving back over to the nightclub space. I just have to move a few things, move some things around. 
I want to see the rest of the NPC stuff. <laughs> How they respond to two demons coming in with us. Alright, so you all make your way over there after... Uh, let, let, let's say about a... About a 30 minute walk. You all make your way over there. Uh, you, you walk and... You walk and talk amongst yourselves. Whatever you may decide y'all want to say with each other <gasps> excuse me <clears throat> and when you get to the entrance you see you are greeted by a couple of soldiers standing uh, by the entrance and they look at you all they give you a quick scan they say entry permitted and then when the two demons uh, begin to enter the building they immediately Prepare themselves to fire. Easy now, gentlemen. They're with us. What? It... Sir, by all means, what do you mean they're with you? Well, exactly what I meant. Instead of fighting us, they actually gave us some assistance. Sir, did you? You aren't concussed or possessed or anything, are you? No. And Henry Spains, I am. <laughs> Mask, he speaks up and he says, uh, Correction, the only assistance I gave them was deciding and making it very clear that this wasn't my problem and I didn't lay a single finger on them. And... Raphael, he speaks up and he says, Yeah, I started to fight them, but then I changed my mind when I realized how fun of people they were. Okay. Well, uh... Uh... Please, please, come, in, come inside, I suppose. As <laughs> once you enter, you can see that the place is more or less littered with... Uh, task force operatives there are a couple of different makeshift workstations there's some machinery there appear to be medical devices and whatnot uh, running and doing their processes you can see zero giving off orders left and right to those that approach him as he is frantically taking notes of any information that is coming his way. Uh, where Yuza was initially lying down and writhing in pain, you can see that she is currently being held inside of a magical prison. Uh, this prison is restricting any and all movement that she could possibly be doing. And she is no longer writhing around in pain trying to fight off uh, her possession that almost slipped through. In fact, she, also, she appears to be semi-conscious as well. As for Cynthia and Roselia, they are taking the time to magically analyze the portals that are still in the area and that have not dissipated yet. With that, any interactions you may wish to have may now commence. Henry runs up to Roselia and asks her to teach him how to use that force magic that he used on him last time. I've been waiting a long time for this. It's only been a couple of hours. Have you recovered? Too long for Henry. It's too long. Spells are spells. <laughs> you really do have a one-track mind, don't you, lad? Yes, magic. Well, to answer you, no, I have not completely recovered yet. The only reason I am standing in the capacity that I am is thanks to Cynthia's help. So, you can wait a little longer. Lunches over and walks to the table in the back. 
dropped it there. <laughs> okay. Raphael. Mask. Do you think these portals connect to where you're from? Uh... T. As Mask walks over to the portal to the leftmost side of the nightclub area, uh... Zero sees him walking, and within seconds, his weapon is drawn and it is being held towards Mask's face. Henry runs in front of Zero and says, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Easy, Zero. We're just trying to, we're just trying to send these two home. All right. In fairness... I saw an unrecognized person, life form, let's say life form, so I'm not disrespectful. I saw a life form I didn't recognize, my fight or flight triggered, you know the rest. All good, it's all good. Right. But now, um, you want to explain? As he puts his weapon away. These two demons were um, unfortunately summoned against their own will. They wanted nothing to do with us or the conflicts that were there were dragged into. And instead of fighting us, they decided to sit it out. And we took care of the rest. We also brought someone for questioning as well. Um, he's a little traumatized, but he's still mentally functional. As I point at the guy over there. What? When you say traumatized, what did you do to him? Because, 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 let me, let me say that. In, in my media consumption experience of cultists, right? It takes a lot to traumatize one of them. So, <laughs> what kind of crazy shit did you do? Henry he was what? going he was going to use flare on us. Fortunately, Henry had a few magic tricks up his sleeve. He tried to escape. I teared off his legs. And uh our favorite friend, Xander, took his Ignis shards away from him without killing him. And since they were embedded into his skull, I'm sure it's a painful experience. Oh, that explains the trauma. Okay. Um. Cool. So, you're trying to send them home. Where is Thanks home for them? Well. Henry flirts out hell. <laughs> well, well, he said it. Hell. I was hoping for one of these portals could maybe take them home. Or even if they had any information about the three portals and where they lead for you. Hmm. Well, uh, I don't, as you know, I don't really do the arcane magic shit. That's more the cats and dragon horns job. Uh, speaking of cats... Perry, how's it going? How do you how are you liking your 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 new teammates? Uh, they bought me a lot of liquor. So, fantastic. My life is great right now. I really I really would not, you know, enjoy fighting from now on. Like I I'm not really a fighter. But, you know, that's fine. If that means I get to keep drinking then, you know, whatever. Oh, uh, I you know what? That's a good enough answer for me right now. Uh, the rest of you, how are you? How are you uh, holding up? Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, Alora also said she's doing fairly swell. I'm yeah, hungry. Yeah. Though. What? What is that, by the way, Alora? What is she? She like a? She's like a dog. Like what kind of? 
breed, like see kind of breed. She is a pixie fairy. Aww. Fairy, she is Aww. a fairy. And you, you said you guys are from like somewhere else, right? Yes. And you have fairies there. You know, you see, um, no, no, we don't. Alora kind of. Well, I found her recently, like give or take, like a few days ago, and she's like been she sitting by you. my side. She, yeah, uh, yeah, she found me. She found me. <laughs> and are there like more of her? I have no uh, Alora. Are there more of you? Um, of me specifically, or other fairies like me? Other fairies like you. Um. I don't really know, um, where I kind of came from, uh, my memories only consist of, uh, other magic creatures that looked like me, but were kind of a different color. I don't really remember a whole lot from where I came from, I just remember hearing a a really confused voice telling me to find you. Oh, it's kind of like fate. Yeah, now, what what did she say? I don't speak that, so... And, and, yeah, oh. I, was, I was getting to, 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 to parry. <laughs> to parry, it sounds like... Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> I don't want to do the voice anymore. Um... Oh, Perry. So apparently, um, Alora does have a few of her kind, and they come in various different colors, which is nice. But she hasn't seen them in a while, and she decided that she... Well, not decided. More of a voice told her that she had to come and find me. So this is where we're at currently. Huh, interesting. Interesting. Some Alora lore, some might say. Um Yes. Does she drink? Here! And she like, she's gonna pour out some of the alcohol into like, the cap of her drink and like, hold it out for her. Oh my god, she's gonna die. Does she drink it? Drink it! Uh, I mean, Alora, if you want. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. She is going to... She is going to stare at the cap for a... For an unusually long amount of time, and... She places a hand on it. It visibly shrinks in front of you, as it is now small enough for her to hold in her hands. She takes a sip, and Mel, please roll constitution for her. <laughs> She's gonna fucking die. Is it constitution save or just constitution? Constitution. Got it. She spits it out. Oh. Uh Oh dear, she does not like it. Oh, my bad. Sorry. And, and when when she does, uh, what should have been liquid coming out of her mouth appeared to be several sets of sparkles. Oh, that's hey. cute. And she and she says something that is in an angry matter that even Mel doesn't understand. Oh wait, Alora, was that a different language? Um... Not really? Uh... Huh. I use the equivalent of... One of your human swear words? It censored itself. What the, what the, what the fuck did you say? I said... Does anyone play the lute? The lute? What? Nobody. God, you guys are just not the life of the party, are you? Oh. Yasha materializes his loot. He plays the lute! <laughs> Perfect. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, and this is- Oh, this, uh, by the way. Uh, before before you get to shredding on the loot, assuming that's that's what you're gonna do. No, 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 I'm not. Okay. Uh, Dravo walks up, and she says to Perry, uh, about 
you asking about where we're from and such, um, we're all from, well, when I say we, I mean myself, Mel, Zero, Roselia, Yashua, and all of us, uh, we're from completely different dimensions. Uh, do you ever hear about something called the Devourer? In uh, your travels? Would Perry, would she have heard of this? <laughs> uh, yes, because uh, because you are natively born here in Palamisa, every living creature knows what the Devourer is. So she does she know like intimate details about it though, or anything, or just kind of general uh, stuff? Yeah, general stuff. That like it, it when it when it wakes up, it will consume a dimension, and then it gotcha. Okay, uh, it just completely erases things. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm kind of surprised you know what it is, but yeah. Oh, when I, when I came here, I was told by who he claims isn't God, but is a God, but is also a deity. Uh, he told me what it was, and then the more time I spent here, the more I learned about it. Because I'm not, I'm not from, I'm from a dimension called Earth. Earth? Earth? What the hell is an Earth? Uh, well, that's a close enough ex pronunciation, I guess. She mutters that under her breath. Uh, it's, um, I don't, describing my dimension is kind of weird because well, it's like you know, there's life forms. There's a, there's, a, there's several. Is there, is there alcohol? Uh, yes, there's a lot of alcohol. I like it already. Is there the there's ocean? There's also Beyonce. Oh. And I'm I'm still confused as to how you know who Beyonce is, Mel. But we can <laughs> have that discussion for another day. Uh, but. Yeah, I'm not... I've been reading. I'm not from here, and they're from... Uh, did you guys say your dimension was called Lufenia? Yep. Yep. So, you're from Arf and Lufa. Okay. Yeah, Arf and Lufa. Joshua just shrugs. <laughs> this is just so much at once. I don't think I've ever met anyone from another dimension. It's interesting. That or you're all from here and you're just crazy people. Oh well. Yeah, our dimension is a wild trip, I will tell you. Well, if you have any, you know, questions, I guess, about this place, then I guess I can try to answer them. I've been all around it. I know quite a lot. We'll save that for another time. As I get the attention of Rosalia. Something I wanted to ask her. Oh, what? Well, what's up? Sorry to bother you, love. Do you know what these vials are? Um, I show her the the empty, green. the the green vial and the pink vial. And empty syringes. Well, I can tell you that the green one is poison. To those who haven't been indoctrinated into the cult. <laughs> Looks at Mill and, and Perry. Perry. <laughs> at least you know I'm, you know, not a bad guy. And the pink one is an all-in-one restorative. Uh, they're called elixirs. They heal oh. any and all uh, magical wounds and health problems and what have you ah uh, it's a and i can uh, it's a wonder drug yeah and i can teach you how to make them not now though and it's fine we can save that for another time and with that being said session will end for today please get your fake sponsorships out now you got 10 seconds <laughs> before i hit the stop recording button
like and subscribe or I will tear off your legs. Please sponsor us. Looking at you, I honey. Love us very much. And that's a recording.